What's up gamers? Are you tired of not being able to roleplay like Matthew Mercer, Brennan Lee Mulligan, or some other uh, professional actor who you should totally not compare yourself or your fellow players to? Stop that. that, that's not helpful. But in this video, I am going to share a few helpful suggestions, starting with one ridiculously simple house rule. Like, I kind of came up with this accidentally, but one house rule that, as a GM, will basically trick your players into naturally elevating their in-character descriptions. Or if you're a player wanting to boost your own role-playing skills, you don't actually need your GM to approve this house rule, because it really just comes down to a simple shift in your mindset. Let's get into it. I call this homebrew the blank check, and it's kind of a punny name, so just bear with me. Instead of assigning a specific stat or skill to a check, you leave it blank and allow the player facing the challenge to use any stat for the role as long as they can provide a reasonable description of how their character uses the chosen attribute. Thumbs up for getting to the point in almost the first minute of the video, but here's the thing. The blank check sounds simple because it is. Many games even suggest playing like this. However, for some reason, no D20 fantasy TTRPG that I've ever seen actually uses this idea in their rulebook or adventure modules as the default approach to checks and saving throws. They always write in some specific stat, which inevitably constricts the imagination of the GM and players about how that challenge can be faced. So again, even though many games and modules tell you that you can try anything, they don't really encourage it. But this house rule does, because for me, being able to try anything, that's where the magic is. So there's a bit more to unpack here. Some important context. I came up with this idea a couple months ago when I was writing this little adventure. Witch's Word, Dragon's Doom, link below, because I needed a custom one-shot to run several times in a row at a tiny RPG convention, a gathering, if you will. And even though it's a low-level adventure and it's for Shadow Dark, which can be pretty gritty, I wanted it to feel epic, heroic, just to really get my players excited. So in the first encounter, the party starts standing on this very tall, teetering monolith. Yes. I stole this right from the Fellowship of the Ring when the boys are escaping Moria, but instead of goblins, I got kobolds, and instead of lava, I got a forest far beneath them with vines hanging all around. And I don't know if I had just never written an adventure or seen an adventure module before that had assigned a specific stat for swinging on vines, but for the life of me, I could not decide whether I should write that in as a strength check or a dex check. Because, yeah, you gotta be strong to leap and push off a ledge while holding your entire weight on this vine, or you could be leaping all nimbly bimbly from vine to vine, or wait. Here's where I knew I was onto something. You could rely on wisdom to intuit the best route through the canopy, or even intelligence to quickly assess the health of the vines and know which one will provide the most support. And so, I still assigned a numerical DC to this check, but I didn't assign a specific stat to this check or any of the checks in this adventure, ipso facto, the blank check. Now imagine this opening scene. The room shakes as the dragon barrels up from its lair somewhere behind your party, collapsing the stone walkway around you and leaving you all stranded on a teetering monolith. Vines hang everywhere, a forest grows far beneath you, and close by to your left and right are four stone balconies, two holding chests with unknown treasures, and two holding little angry reptile men with blades and rocks at the ready, while a whole gang of reptilians waits on the lower platform ahead, blocking your escape. One of them's about to cast a spell, another is feebly trying to turn a crank that will lower a portcullis over the exit. You're acting first. What do you do? Whoa. Okay, uh, I definitely want to get off this platform, and you know me, I'm heading for the nearest chest, so I guess I'll try swinging on a vine instead of just jumping, but I'm really bad at dex. What do I need to roll for this? Well, you don't need to roll with a specific stat. You can use anything if you give me a reasonable description for how your character does it. Oh? Then with my keen mind, I know that there are a few uh, different species of vines growing here. Ah, uh, yes. Uh... Anchor Ivy, known for its strong roots and durability. Here goes nothing. Done. It encourages creative problem solving and then immediately turns it into roleplay. 
And like I said, this house rule works for saving throws too. In the first session I tested this when a character was attacked by a swarm of spiders and they needed to save against poison, instead of just enduring the poison with constitution, they described their character rapidly and dexterously brushing off the swarm before the poison could reach its full potency. So yeah, it's a little min-maxi. You get to be strategic about it, but in the most creative way possible that automatically creates a fun description. However, the most important thing about giving someone a blank check is having a mutual understanding to be reasonable. So another example, also from the first session I tried this, one of my players, sarcastically, described his character using strength to keep watch overnight by flexing his eyeballs. Now, my group already has a mutual understanding about being goofy but being reasonable, so we all laughed and then I said, no, but I suggested a tiny retcon. Maybe you could have used your superior strength to cut down extra firewood earlier, meaning you got a nice bright campfire that makes it easier to see your surroundings. That sounded reasonable to me, but the player decided to try a different approach anyway. And another caveat, at least at my table, charisma is probably not going to work on anything besides NPCs and monsters. But let me know in the comments if you can think of a reasonable way to charismatically swing on a vine. Maybe, maybe they once wooed an acrobat who taught them a helpful technique, but even then it kind of becomes intelligence. So you're trying to make the creative ideas work, but know that as usual, it's limited by reason and GM approval. That's how the game is supposed to work. GM describes the scene, player describes how their character interacts with it, GM describes what really happens, maybe with a dice roll. What you're not supposed to do, and I don't wanna pull a your fun is wrong or anything, but it does really take me out of the moment when someone says, hmm, I wanna insight check this guy. <laughs> or really the worst of all for me, as someone who loves the try anything mindset. Well, I'm not very good at the skill that I need for this challenge, so I guess I can't do anything. I guess there's nothing I could possibly try in this game of imagination. So if you like it that way, that's fine. But if you want a little more creative thinking and in-character descriptions, then the blank check is an easy house rule for you to try out because it's just a subtle shift in the player's state of mind. Cuz, let's take a step back. Generally, you can't automatically get your fellow players to roleplay more or to roleplay better. It doesn't normally work like that. So, here are the other helpful suggestions that I promised. First of all, you gotta know that some people just won't be into describing stuff. Maybe one of your players is in it just for the strategy of their character features. Actually, that would mean they might like the blank check idea anyway. So let's just say this player is in it only for the lore and the world building. That's totally fine. But for players who are open to more roleplay, lead by example. That can mean making eye contact or not making eye contact. Considering your body language and how it reflects the character or the creature. Miming actions, maybe using an accent, or maybe just changing the pitch of your voice one way or another. And an easy one. When you ask questions or prompt someone else, talk to the character, not the player. Eragorndal, what do you think we should do? And then, when another player does roleplay in a fun way, tell them they were awesome. Literally encourage them. And respond in character, but remember that roleplaying, even in character, can mean acting in that first person, pretending to be them, or it can be third person, just describing what the character says or does. And it never hurts to provide a little incentive for the behaviors you want to see at the table, as long as everybody has a fair shot at living up to those standards. So, if everyone in your group is relatively equal in their desire to roleplay and describe their actions, consider awarding creative ideas and descriptions with inspiration or hero coins. Because hero coins is really what I use to make any adventure epic and heroic. So check out my video about hero coins right here on your screen, and maybe pick up the PDF of this adventure I wrote linked on your screen and down below. In any case, thank you for your support, and special thanks to the Bob World Builder patrons who allow me to do what I do. Keep building.